Welcome everybody. Thank you for coming to this lecture. I would like to really explain to you that uh, this topic is one of my favorite topic. We discuss about aesthetic rehabilitation and the, the use of veneers in obtaining this kind of result. So first of all, I would like to say before starting to grind teeth or to bond restorations, we should really be able to understand the UK that we have in front of you. It means we have to really follow some very basic principle. I mean, aesthetic and functional principle in order to obtain the best result. So I believe that the most important step is that to achieve this kind of result is to really have the data collection. So. Get up is the name. I believe that this is something very useful, completely new, not just talking about, uh, you know, the aesthetic parameters, but uh, about both aesthetic and functional parameters. I believe that is the only one that is capable to do that. And finally, technician, dental technician will receive, maybe for the first time in, the, in their life, exactly all the information they need to really understand what you have to change in the case they have in front of them. So that's a very important step. And let me show you a very easy clinical case. This lady, young lady coming from Spain was complaining about uh, the need to create some veneers on the upper and the lower anterior area. And one uh, colleague, one dentist, uh, sent us this, this lady to do the case with the recommendation to do something for them. After having done some orthodontic treatment, so you can see how the inclination of the uh, occlusal plane and also the gingival outline can influence in negative way the uh, overall picture of the patient that is uh, really slanted, inclined, is not good enough. And he was uh, talking, not showing teeth at all. He wanted to fix the teeth, but I could say, not teeth there. Maybe they need to denture. Maybe not. Look at this. He had actually very... Uh, bad situation in terms of uh, uh, wear, attrition was there, and the teeth are very, very short. So that is why when he was talking, he didn't show at all teeth. That's the problem because that's not a good aesthetic re a result. And most of the time they are more or less ideal. But what I believe that is very important is understand that if you have 10 degrees of change on the angle of disclusion, there is a 35 change in the force applied. So if you are flatter guidance, you have less muscle involvement, less strength, less probability to have a restoration that will be fractured or chipped. So it's very important. Of course, you can flatten it inside the ledge, but not, at, not achieving the result to touch on posteriors during exclusive movement. Again, remain, of course, important step that we have to keep the anterior guidance that exclude the posterior teeth, not contact the posterior teeth during the scrotal movement. But at the same time, if you are more flat and not so steep, that will be an improvement of uh, most mass involvement that will be less and less. That's very important. So we need more overjet in this case. If you start like that, we should arrive to that so situation 